I know this video is going long. You're a truly committed nerd if you're still hanging. Or else maybe you're one of my students and I arm twisted you into enduring all this. A couple final comments before I stop yakking. The Batman design that we used for this example could be drawn as one continuous curve. But what if our design includes a jump discontinuity? For example, let's say that for some reason I want the tail to disconnect at x equals 10, y equals 0, and move down 4 units. The x values on the tail didn't change at all, but all the y values got decreased by 4 units. That means our y of t graph would now have to look like this. Since x of t didn't change, I'll move it off the screen. Consider this function h of t equals absolute value t minus 17 over quantity t minus 17. This is just a constant graph, except for that jump of two units upward at t equals 17. But our graph of y of t didn't experience a jump of two units upwards, it experienced a jump of four units downward. So we'll multiply this function by negative two. Now we've got a jump of four units downward. Now if I add this expression into our y of t equation, what it's going to do is move this section of the graph two units upward, positive two, and it's going to move this section of the graph two units downward. I didn't really want to move this section at all, and I wanted this section to move four units downward, not just two units downward. So let's do this. Let's subtract two in the equation. That moves the graph down, 2, and that's what we want. We want it to add 0 along this stretch. We didn't want it to change at all. And we want it to add negative 4. We want it to vertically translate this portion downward by 4. So back here in Desmos, either at the end of the y of t equation, or I can just put it here in the beginning. If I put negative 2 absolute value t minus 17 over quantity t minus 17 minus 2 added to the rest of that equation, there you have it. The tail has been moved down 4 units. And of course, you could implement multiple jumps in the y of t equation, as well as the x of t equation if you need to. This is a pretty robust process that can accommodate a very wide range of designs. Let's close out the video with a few more of my designs. This is one of my earlier designs. It's made up of quite a few segments, 12 segments to be exact, but they're all linear. You see that there are a number of jump discontinuities, a number of times when you have to lift your pencil when tracing this design. Here's a jump. Here's another jump. Here's another jump. Here's another jump. Here's a jump. Here's a jump. And here's a jump. And in the equations, you see where the jump discontinuities have been added in. In this design, again, we see several jump discontinuities, and the design is mostly made up of ellipses, or segments thereof. Therefore, we see evidence of the trigonometric parameterization of the equations. We see cosine for x and sine for y. Cosine and sine, again. This time sine and cosine. Cosine and sine. And if you're comfortable with trig, you know that any cosine can be converted into a sine via horizontal translations, and vice versa. Here's a fleur-de-lis in honor of New Orleans, the city I've called home since summer 2005. That's a very curvy shape, and accordingly, we see a lot of sines and cosines throughout the equations. Notice that in some cases, these trig expressions are indicative of a segment of an ellipse, for example, we see that on the interval of t equals 4 to t equals 6, I'm looking at this and this right here, we see that we have a cosine and a sine. And in fact, due to the fact that the magnitude of the coefficient is 5 in both cases, it's not just a segment of an ellipse, it's a segment of a circle. But contrast that with what's going on in the interval from t equals 0 to t equals 3. I'm talking about this expression and this expression. Notice that only one of them is sinusoidal, and the other is linear. Here's a sine, and there's no trig function here. That is because from t equals 0 to t equals 3, the curve is not in the shape of an ellipse. It's in the shape of a sinusoid. If I were to continue it, it would look something like this. And the fact that the sinusoid is running up and down a vertical axis instead of along a horizontal axis, 
That is why the sine function appears in the x of t equation and not the y of t equation. If sine had appeared in y of t and x of t had been linear, then we would have had a sinusoid running along a horizontal axis. Since I'm called Mr. White in my own classroom, this year is my second favorite high school teacher named Mr. White. You can probably see that the level of difficulty in this curve has gone up a few notches from what I've shown you previously. The parts that were most challenging were, quite predictably, the mustache here, and also the bottom edge of those sunglasses. And as the curve becomes more complicated, of course the equation is going to become longer as well. The oscillations in the mustache were going left-right along a horizontal axis, and that's why we see an appearance of cosine in only the y of t equation. And the bottom edge of those sunglasses, that took a little experimentation. I ended up using a rational function here, as well as hyperbolic cosine. I don't really have to pull that function out too often in this kind of activity. And finally, let's end with this one. Funny thing is, I'm not that big of a superhero fanatic, but with Batman getting so much mathematical attention, it seemed fitting to give Superman his dues. Here it is in Desmos. Single curve. This design is made up of almost 30 segments, so the equation got to be a little ridiculous in length. But Desmos and GeoGebra both handled it quite well. And here are those equations. Now this time I organize the expressions by type. You see linear expressions here, quadratic here, trigonometric, jump discontinuities. And you can see that the expressions are spilling off the right edge of the screen. Let me show you how long they are. I shall now refrain from saying any more about my process for creating single, non-piecewise parametric curves. I hope you found it interesting and or fun. I have no expectations that this will necessarily reach beyond an extremely small niche of the nerd population, but if you end up making any curves with this process, I'd love to see them. Bye.